Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. There is one body and one spirit. There is one Lord, God calls to us. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God, the Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, we humbly pray that as your only begotten Son was this day presented in the temple so we may be presented to you with pure and clean hearts by Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. reading from Malachi. Thus says the Lord, see, I am sending my messenger to prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple. The messenger of the covenant in whom you delight, indeed, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who can endure the day of his coming, and who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire, and like fuller's soap. He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver, and he will purify the descendants of Levi and refine them like gold and silver until they present offerings to the Lord in righteousness. Then the offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasing to the Lord as in the days of old and as in former years. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the book of Hebrews. Since God's children share flesh and blood, Jesus himself likewise shared the same things, so that through his death he might destroy the one who has the power of death, that is, the devil, and free those who all their lives were held in slavery by the fear of death. For it is clear that he did not come to help angels, but the descendants of Abraham. Therefore, he had to become like his brothers and sisters in every respect, so that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in the service of God, to make a sacrifice of atonement for the sins of the people. Because he himself was tested by what he suffered, he is able to help those who are being tested. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord when the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, Jesus' parents brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, as it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for the falling and rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be opposed so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was of a great age, having lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, then as a widow to the age of 84. 
She never left the temple, but worshiped there with fasting and prayer, night and day. At that moment she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. The Gospel of the Lord. words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be always acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. The, the Christ candle is lit because we have a baptism today, which we're not accustomed to having necessarily at the presentation of our Lord. Looks like y'all are trapped. Let me move this. Okay. They did what was required by their custom and the law. Mary and Joseph weren't doing anything extraordinary. They were doing what was ordinary. The tradition of the covenant of Moses required that the firstborn be offered to God as special and unique, truly as valuable. And so they did what was ordinary. The law didn't require them to go to Jerusalem to do that, by the way. The custom required them to do that. And so they went. And they were shocked by what happened there. It wasn't the priesthood or the aristocracy or people in robes who met them at the door or in the temple and approached them and made grand proclamations. It was a faithful old man and a faithful old woman of no account. but who had hope and trust and faith that God was going to do something in the world to save everyone, to make everyone whole again. And whatever they saw in the face of that child, it connected with them. And so they, they told everyone that they knew, everyone in earshot in the temple, They told them the things that they thought were most true, that God had done something new, that God's salvation was near and here now. And then Mary and Joseph go on about what they went there to do, to offer the child. To connect that child to the covenant. And in the same way, that's sort of what we're here for. At least what this family is here for. To connect this child forever to the community of the church. To the life of Christ. And in this ceremony that we observe today, baptism, we come as close to the root of our faith as close as we, as we can come, closer even than we do in burials. 
Many of you know we've had five burials since Christmas. Dear people who lived long, full lives. People who were baptized by water and the Holy Spirit. Like all of us. We come into this place, we worship throughout our lives, and we make these promises to follow as best we can. And that when we fail, we own up to it, and we try again. And it's through that cycle of living that we become Christian. Baptism is the beginning, not the completion. Death is another step on that path, not the end. And so what we do in this place, when we bring a new human, a baby, or an adult, into the body of Christ, is we proclaim our hope, and we strive to be the people that God created us to be. Knowing we will fail, and knowing that we can only follow this way of life together, relying on you, and you relying on each other, being there when we need to be carried, being there when we need support, and being there when it's time to celebrate. There is no more miraculous thing, maybe than birth itself, by what we are about to do, in this baptism. We renewed our baptismal vows a few weeks ago at the baptism of our Lord, the first Sunday following Epiphany. And I challenged everyone to take that bulletin home. And if you weren't here that day, maybe take your bulletin home today and read the vows that we make. Think about them, talk about them. And wonder always how can I take the next step to follow the Lord of life? How? Amen. Anyone that would like to see better is welcome to come stand around the font back here if you would like. Okay. Are we ready? The candidate for holy baptism will now be presented. Will you be responsible for seeing that the child you present is brought up in the Christian faith and life? 
We, by your prayers and witness, help this child to grow into the full stature of Christ. Do you renounce Satan and all the spiritual forces of wickedness that rebel against God? Do you renounce the evil powers of this world, which corrupt and destroy the creatures of God? Do you renounce all sinful desires that draw you from the love of God? Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your Savior? Do you put your whole trust in his grace and love? Do you promise to follow and obey him as your Lord? Now a question addressed to all of you. Will you who witness these vows do all in your power to support this child in her life in Christ? Amen. Let us join with the one who is committing herself to Christ and renew our own baptismal covenant. Do you believe in God the Father? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? Do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread, and in the prayers? Will you persevere in resisting evil? And whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? Will you strive for justice and peace among all people? and respect the dignity of every human being. Let us now pray for this person who is to receive the sacrament of new birth. Deliver her, O Lord, from the way of sin and death. Open her heart to your grace and truth. Fill her with your holy and life-giving spirit. Keep her in the faith and communion of your holy church. Teach her to love others in the power of the Spirit. Send her into the world in witness to your love. Bring her to the fullness of your peace and glory. Grant, O Lord, that all who are baptized into the death of Jesus Christ, your Son, may live in the power of his resurrection and look for him to come again in glory, who lives and reigns now and forever. Amen. Amen. <laughs> the Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We thank you, Almighty God, for the gift of water. Over it, the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation, through which you led the children of Israel out of their bondage in Egypt into the land of promise. In it, your Son Jesus received the baptism of John and was anointed by the Holy Spirit as the Messiah, the Christ, to lead us through his death and resurrection from the bondage of sin into everlasting life. We thank you, Father, for the water of baptism. In it we are buried with Christ in his death, 
By it we share in his resurrection. Through it we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in joyful obedience to your Son, we bring into his fellowship those who come to him in faith, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Now sanctify this water, we pray you, by the power of your Holy Spirit, that those who are here cleansed from sin and born again may continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Savior. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Amen. Name this child. Rebecca Joe, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Rebecca Joe, you are sealed by the Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you that by water and the Holy Spirit, you have bestowed upon this your servant the forgiveness of sin and have raised her to the new life of grace. Sustain her, O Lord, in your Holy Spirit. Give her an inquiring, discerning heart, the courage to will and to persevere, a spirit to know and to love you, and the gift of joy and wonder in all your works. Amen. Amen. Let us welcome the newly baptized. We receive you into the household of God. Confess the faith of Christ crucified. Proclaim his resurrection and share with us in his eternal reason. the Lord be always with you.
good to have everyone here this morning as we gather to celebrate and give thanks for a new life in Christ that we celebrate this day. I'm glad that you can all be a part of that. If you happen to be visiting us today, we look forward to greeting you further as we gather on the front steps and get to know one another better. And if you would like, please fill out a newcomer or visitor card so we can have your information and uh, can share stuff with you throughout the course of the week and month ahead. Um, there are a number of announcements, primarily this evening from 6, 5, five where is it? 5.30 to 8 o'clock tonight, uh, gathering to enjoy some Super Bowl food and festivity and watch a bit of a game. Chances are, if it's over at 8 o'clock, the game won't be over. Uh, it seems to stretch on forever. Um, everything else, please take the time to read in your bulletin uh, and respond as you would like. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Because in the mystery of the Word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts, to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you made known to us in creation. In the calling of Israel to be your people in your word spoken through the prophets. And above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the savior and redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil, and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where with St. Paul and all your saints 
we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. This is the table not of the church, but of the Lord. It is made ready for those who love him, and for those who want to love him more. So come, you who have much faith, and you who have little. You who have been here often, and you who have not been here long, you have tried to follow, and you who have faith. Come, because it is the Lord who invites you. It is his will that those who want him should meet him here.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. In the name of this congregation, I send you forth bearing these holy gifts that those to whom you go may share with us in the communion of Christ's body and blood. We who are many are one body because we share one bread, one cup. Go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage, hold fast that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil, strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, help the afflicted, honor all persons, love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. In the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with us this day and forever. Amen. 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 